Hello, welcome to a priori story timeless. We have our friend Moose with us today. There you go, buddy. And uh, <coughs> a squirrel, very small squirrel. Yes, but pay attention to the story. <coughs> this uh, story is uh, from the first people's Abenaki. And uh, it was, uh, uh, it's told by Joseph Brukach or Bruchak, I think. <coughs> uh, Maine's Baxter, Baxter State Park is famous for moose. If you wanna see one, the ranger suggests lingering in the vicinity of Sandy Stream Pond. A path leads to a flat boulder called Big Rock the commands a view of the water and beyond the pond, the east face of Mount Katahdin. When I perched on the big rock early one morning, there was not a moose to be seen, but the mountain had a rosy glow, pink granite warmed by red dawn light. A strip of cloud flirted with Katahdin summits, embracing Hamlin Peak, but leaving Pomola and Baxter Peaks untouched and jealous. The cloud arm gestured with a cool white hand as if to tease, while a hopeful moose watcher waited in the fresh light of a new day. I was not alone. A red squirrel lives near the big rock and he disapproved of my presence. His scolding reminded me of a story, a tale of the Abenaki, who with their allies dominated Northern New England when Europeans arrived in North America and for many years thereafter. A hero of Abenaki mythology is Gluskabe or Gluskabe. When the creator finished making the earth, he brushed the dust off his hands. And from that dust, Gluskabe shaped himself. Gluskabi was a figure of power and ingenuity who took an interest in human beings. When people were first created, he feared the animals might harm them. He called the animals together and pronounced the Abenaki word for human being, Alnabe. The deer and the rabbit fled, even the wolf retreated, but the red squirrel flew into a rage. It tore limbs from trees and threw boulders left and right. At this time, squirrels were large, larger than bears. And Gluskabi saw that enormous angry squirrels would cause people plenty of trouble. He spoke quietly to the squirrel and petted its head. Each time he stroked it, the squirrel became smaller. When Gluskabi stopped petting the squirrel, it was smaller than a rabbit. And although it still had a terrible temper, Human beings had no need to fear it. Guskabi asked the moose what it would be, do when it saw a human being. I will toss him on my horns. I will trample him under my feet. No, Guskabi said, that is not how it should be. Guskabi used his powers to soften the attitude of the moose and in the process bent his nose. And ever since the moose has been a gentle giant who wears a crooked snout. Gluskabi was a bit of a Puritan. It seems that the creator had made the sap of maple trees as thick and sweet as maple syrup is today. When Gluskabi went to visit the human beings, he found them lying on their backs in a maple grove, drinking sap as it ran from the trees. They were fat, happy, and unambitious, which did not seem fitting to Gluskabi. He put water into the maples until the sap was much less sweet. When the sap had been diluted, people got up and went to work. The squirrel stopped chattering as sunlight brightened Sandy Stream Pond. I heard noise from across the pond, the exact sound you might imagine a moose would make walking through the woods. A big bull stepped out of the forest and posed in the sunlight. At first he faced me, then he entered the pond and displayed his profile. 
His nose was just as Gluskabi had left it. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Thank you so very much. Enjoy your time with us.